I'm going to show you a nice attacking game from the USA Croatia match featuring Wesley So playing white and he's playing against Marin Bosjotsic from Croatia. Apologies if my pronunciation is quite wrong in that one. Anyway, without further ado, Wesley opens with e4. Well, I think of him as being mainly a c4 and a d4 man, but in this Olympiad, he's uh, been playing e4 um, quite a bit. Very interesting. He, uh, he seems to be sharpening up his game, maybe against slightly weaker opponents. I mean, e4, he's not a total stranger to e4, but just interesting to see him playing it regularly in this Olympiad. And he's not afraid to go into an open Sicilian. And his opponent plays the Nidorf. So obviously a severe test. Now, earlier in the Olympiad, he actually had this um, and played with F3. And we got this, well, it transposed to a, a bishop E3 variation. And Wesley won a nice game, quite a sharp game. Say he played bishop e3 straight away. e5, the, the typical Nidorf move. And the bishop comes to e6. Beautifully chunky square for that bishop. And now, instead of playing f3, which goes back into the, the main line of the bishop e3 variation, where's he played bishop e2? So he's full of surprises. So basically we've gone back into a, a well, the so-called Karpov system, or maybe Geller system is more accurate, um, of the bishop e2 variation. Bishop e7 is the most accurate move. And here, well, the way that Karpov, Geller, and many, many others used to play is just a castle king side here, and castle king side, and so on. And, you know, this is a very positional, strategic kind of game on the board. But Wesley played here uh, an extraordinary move. I should say another move here is knight d5. And this can lead to very interesting positions after queen d3. That protects this pawn. Oops, protects this pawn on e4. And here. And sometimes, if white is very brave, he castles queenside. Um... Anyway, back to the game. I'm waffling. New move from Wesley. After just 17 seconds, he played h4. So presumably he'd prepared this at home. It looks really bizarre to me. I have to say that my instinctive reaction to this is simply to castle, actually. Just to ignore it totally. And I wonder... Would Wesley, in that case, just play bishop f3 to prevent black from playing d5? And then, you know, go on the offensive with g4, g5 and, and try to put this pawn storm to good use and then perhaps casting on the on the queen side. Um, that's possible. It's interesting. Somehow I don't believe it. <laughs> it just feels very slow to me. Um, black always has counterplay on the queen side, but interesting idea. And the other move which I would be tempted to play with black here as a reaction to a wing attack, well, classically, you can break in the centre. And it's not exactly clear to me what uh, Wesley has in mind. So, but my thought is this, perhaps exchanging, putting the bishop on f3. So bringing this bishop to a nice diagonal. But... Black manages to grab a bishop. Got to protect that pawn. That's a slight problem. If knight c6, then knight c5. I mean, bishop a7 doesn't look very attractive. I mean, this is uh, an interesting way for white to play. Black has the bishops, but white has very nice pieces. Whoops. Here. Who knows? Well... Uh, maybe there'll be some more experiments with this h4 move later on. In any case, black played h5. It just feels like a slight overreaction to me. And knight d5 now is very clever. As I mentioned before, the main move against knight d5 is actually not to take it straight away. 
Normally, the move against knight d5 without the h pawns is to play knight d7. And that forces white to protect this e pawn. But in this case, you don't need to bother protecting it. You can just take on e7. And now bishop g5. And this pin is very annoying. Now, this just wouldn't be very good if the pawns were on h2 and h7 because that bishop could just be booted away with h6 and, and if the bishop goes to h4 then possibly even g5 is, is not bad. So that would be a problem. So that's why black here simply exchanged straight away. But you can see white hasn't had to protect that e-pawn with a slightly ugly move, queen d3, and can just get on with his moves on the queen side. Wesley thought for 20 minutes over c4, actually, so he was obviously coming, just coming to terms with this position. But I find it very interesting that he's uh, prepared to play a move like h4. He's really experimenting, improvising in these positions. Uh, maybe it's a relief to him to play slightly weaker players after playing in these elite tournaments for some time. I should say his opponent is a grandmaster who's rated 2600. So uh, not a bad player at all. Now here black plays g6, which looks to me again like a slight overreaction. Um, a very interesting idea is just a castle with the idea of giving up that pawn and breaking with b5 to just undermine the support for the pawn on d5. I mean, certainly losing that h pawn for the moment simply doesn't create any problems for, for black. Sooner or later, white is going to have to castle. And then, yeah, that h pawn is slightly loose. It seems to me that after this, b5, black has pretty good compensation. It's a messy position. So I think g6 was a little bit nervous. g3 from Wesley. So if that's nervous, is that a nervous move, g3? Well, not really, because um, it's good to support the h-pawn. And it can be useful for when we advance here. Let's take a look. Now, black played b6. Well, again, I think you could just castle here. Black is making sure that nothing happens here. This knight switches round, knight d2, and now f4, really interesting. So Wesley is really going for it here. Now I think black, I mean maybe, you know, I was slightly criticising some of black's moves. Um, they're not blunders in any way, but here I think is the first moment when black really does play a move which is substandard. I think he should just take here and castle. And I'm, well, I have a feeling that Wesley would have played the knight round to f3 to perhaps come in here looking at c6. But I think this is quite a tricky position because white's king side is potentially a little bit vulnerable. Um, I think the king is probably going to have to live on the king side here. So I think black is always going to have counter chances in this position. But black played here queen c8. And I think that's the wrong square for the queen. Okay, let's see his idea. Castles from Wesley. Now, if black castles, then we can push on with f5 with very nice pressure. So black played knight c5. Well, I think this was probably his idea. You know, he, he's looking down at h3, but that gets cleared up very quickly just by advancing the king to g2. And then I think the queen is a bit misplaced. And yeah, but white's attack looks quite strong now. I mean, perhaps this, this should be exchanged off, but well, in this case, yeah, maybe even rook takes and, and bishop d4 could be very strong indeed, actually. Rook a7 played. 
obviously thinking about guarding some squares here. Queen c2. That's a nice move, just preparing this. Bishop d8. And now f5. And now Wesley really is in the driver's seat. Where's black's counterplay? This is the problem. Well, it's just not there at all. So something has gone very, very badly wrong for black. Uh, it, it, black's moves look indecisive. He didn't quite come up with a coherent plan. I think that's the problem. Rook g8 played. And a Wesley exchange. Now, if pawn takes, then bishop takes. Now, we would like to play queen takes. But then rook takes, followed by knight e4. Attacking two pieces. So, um, coming back here, but after bishop takes knight, if, if pawn takes, then bishop d3. With pressure here. And now just rook g3. With the idea of doubling on the f file. It's a very unpleasant position for black. Okay, back to this position. The rook takes g6. But at least the rooks will be connected in that, in that variation. Um, but this is just miserable. You can see rooks split. And white, on the other hand, beautifully coordinated. And now it is just a massacre. Black is in a world of pain at this moment. Bishop takes h5. It's not getting better. And now we are turning right and then downhill all the way to attack the king. Rook comes back to defend, but queen h7. The queen is in. And if the rook shuffles to the side, bishop h6 wins. Queen g4 play to protect that rook. And now a nice winning move. Rook g5. If bishop takes, queen takes g8. And then that's over. In the game, rook takes was played. And then bishop takes g5. And that was the final move of the game. Black resigned. Why did black resign? Well, let's have a look. Bishop takes. If bishop takes bishop, we give a check. And then we take on e7. And we take that queen. Um, apart from that, if the king tries to run, let's say here, then this also doesn't look very promising. And for example, here, well, white is just completely crashing through, looking at all these pieces. And of course, queen e2 never gets anywhere after rook f2. Um, an absolutely crushing win for Wesley, who seems to be on great form. So far, he has six out of seven. And Fabiano Caruana also playing well. He has four and a half out of six. Uh, that victory helped, that win helped the USA to a 3-1 victory over Croatia. So the USA are now back in joint first place with Azerbaijan and Poland, who drew their match today. Um, I have to say, USA looking on tremendous form at the moment. They play Azerbaijan in the next round, so that is a massive matchup. And Poland take on Armenia, who are just one point behind. So things looking really interesting. Um, I want to show you another game from this round, actually. So if you want to check out the link up there, and you're going to see an absolutely crazy game uh, played by the Swedish player uh, Tiger Hill up person and it's absolutely mad so do check that out and do check out check out the whole of the Olympiad playlist I've uh, I've selected some nice games and uh, do please check it out and please if you if you're not a subscriber just click on the subscribe button it's free to subscribe thanks a lot